In this video, we're going to look at temperature tolerance in living things. Temperature is one of the many limiting factors that determine the presence of life on Earth. What this means is most organisms live within a specific temperature range to survive. There's other limiting factors besides temperature, and these might include sunlight, so especially for plants. Plants need some sort of sunlight, some access to it, to grow and flourish. Then there's water, so all organisms need water to survive. Nutrients available, so if there's not enough nutrients, sometimes there could be diseased plants or even humans. If we don't have enough nutrients within our diet, there's some diseases that we can get from that. Oxygen, we, a lot of organisms need oxygen. Not all, but most organisms need oxygen to survive. So if oxygen is limiting, Again, that's another environment which is not good for organisms to survive. In higher altitudes, you'll find that there's less organisms living up there and that is because the oxygen content decreases because the air is actually thinner at higher altitudes. A balanced pH environment. So whether it's a pool, for example, you'll find that algae might grow on the pool if the pH is correct for that organism to grow. It's the same with us. We need a balanced pH environment. If you were to put acid in our environment, our skin would not be able to handle that. Australian animals often have to cope with extreme environmental temperature and have developed many different adaptations to do this. So chemical reactions that occur in cells take place only within a relatively narrow range of temperatures due to the sensitivity of enzymes. We have learned that enzymes have an optimal range of temperatures which they can function. For example, tissue temperatures greater than 42 degrees are lethal to most organisms as important enzymes begin to denature at this temperature. This results in a reduced ability to function, so our, our bodies are less efficient at functioning. As a result, organisms live within a specific temperature range to survive. Endotherms. So organisms which regulate their internal body temperature are restricted to living in places where the temperature of the environment is within the range of temperature over which their enzymes work. It might be different for different environments. If you're an aquatic organism, it might be within a cooler temperature range. So they might have enzymes that work in a cooler temperature range. And if you live in the desert, the organisms out there might be able to, to work in a warmer temperature range. Only being active at times when the environmental temperature is close to the optimum temperature of their enzymes. Endotherms temperature tolerance. Outside the range of, this, of temperatures, the enzymes would either be denatured due to the, the temperature being too hot or would be prevented from working by it being too cold. These species which do not regulate their body temperature at a constant level are called ectotherms. Now, ectotherms can live within a wider range of temperatures than endotherms because endotherms have to regulate their internal environment to be warm or to be a certain temperature. Humans are, you know, can go in many environments and the reason why we can do that is we have adapted things that either make us really warm in a cold environment or can cool us down in a really hot environment. So if you were to go to Canada, for example, which has an extreme range of temperatures in winter, it gets really cold, up to minus 70 degrees, and we would not be able to survive that with our normal skin. We need to rug up, we need to put jackets on to survive that temperature. So humans could be seen as the most, the organism that is able to live within a large, wide range of temperatures but we adapt our body to actually suit that temperature by putting on um, jumpers and stuff. Or if we're in the heat, we take off our clothing. And if it's extreme heat and constant extreme heat, you'll find that those places that are really hot in summer will have a lot of air conditioning. And the air conditioning actually helps us bring our body back to our normal temperature. So many ecto thermic animals have a limited ability to cope with different environmental temperatures. This is because they alter their body temperature using energy from the sun. 
So for example, exothermic species can bask in the sun to absorb the heat energy provides. Snakes will do it, lizards will do it, and they'll just sit in the sun and they will absolutely absorb the sun's energy. By increasing their, their, their heat on the outside of their body, it increases the temperature of their blood. Because it increases the temperature of their blood, it increases their metabolic processes. So an exotherm really only needs to eat when their body temperature is really warm and they're able to hunt as well. And that's why an exotherm won't be able to be nocturnal, for example, because if at night, the temperatures are cooler. So in many species, a dark color facilitates absor absorption of heat. And there's some lizards, one in particular, that can actually change colors depending on how hot it is and it can absorb, so a darker color means it will absorb more energy from the sun and a lighter color means that it's not absorbing all that heat. These animals can have behavioral adaptations and they move into the shade during hot periods to prevent from overheating as well. So they do have a range of their maximum temperature which they like as well. If they are in a cold temperature, ectotherms actually decrease their metabolic processes. What this means is that the body actually slows down. The body only has fast metabolic processes when they are actually in a hot environment and or the type of environment that they like. So a warmer environment actually makes them move faster. That's why in a cold environment, if it's been really cold in a cold night, you might walk over a snake and the snake can't really do much because the snake um, is, the body is still cold. It cannot move fast at all. So because of an exotherm's ability to change its metabolism with the environmental temperature, they can live in a wider temperature range. However, they may remain inactive when it's outside their optimal temperature. Some frogs are actually known to live in um, quite wide temperatures where when it's warmer, they're able to be active. When it's cold, their beat per minute, their heartbeat per minute decreases to less than one beat per minute. So which means that their blood is being pumped through their body extremely slowly. And that's the difference between an exotherm and an endotherm. An endotherm will regulate their internal environment, but their blood does not actually slow down unless it's an animal that is going into hibernation. And if they're going into hibernation, then metabolic processes do slow down naturally. Okay, this temperature range in which a species can survive is termed its tolerance range for temperature. And it's usually only a few degrees outside the range at which the organism is comfortable. So the majority of organisms' environments, the great majority of living organisms are found in the 10 degrees to 35 degrees Celsius range. And for each individual species, the range is even narrower. Active plants, plant growth in most plants occurs between 5 to 40 degrees Celsius. So plants seem to have a wider range, but they may only grow. So below 0 degrees, cell risk ice crystals forming in them, and above 45 degrees, proteins within cells may denature. They may only grow between 15 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius, even though they can survive between 5 and 40 degrees Celsius. The broad range of temperatures over which life is found Life in some form can be found in extreme temperatures at extremes ranging from minus 89 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees in deserts, up to 350 degrees in hot thermal vents in the sea, and in most aquatic environments, the aquatic environments range from minus 2 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius. So you can see here that there's, that looks like a wide temperature range but most organisms cannot survive those at both extreme ends. Either the organism is at one end or is at the bottom end, whichever one it can survive in. As humans are extremely lucky, we have things that can protect us from these environments. Even though humans might actually want to live between 10 degrees and up to 40 degrees, we can actually alter our environment to suit us, whether it's putting on clothes or changing the air conditioning temperature. Some living organisms have a high tolerance for extreme temperatures. Species that occupy the habitats with extreme conditions, such as really hot water, ice, or extreme salt conditions, are ex sometimes referred to as extremophiles. 
For example, the microorganism Pyrolobus fumari is a hypothermophilic microbe and it grows optimally at 106 degrees Celsius in hydrothermal vents and can withstand temperatures from 95 degrees to 113 degrees Celsius. So even though it lives at an extreme temperature, its temperature range is still narrow. It can only live within the 95 degrees Celsius to 113 degrees. Thermophilic bacteria called spirochetes live in sulfurs, volcanic hot springs such as champagne pools in New Zealand. So if you've been to a place like this, you'll understand it actually has a bit of a smell, but they, that's where they can live. This bacteria can move by twisting like a corkscrew, and I've got a picture here, and you can actually see it's got that corkscrew or the spiral structure. However, individual species cannot survive in an environment with a temperature range this large. They need much narrower ranges. So even though they survive in a hotter temperature, for example, there's a narrow range where they can actually survive in. So why organisms live in a narrow temperature range? Most species have a limited range of temperature over which they can survive and reproduce. Tolerance ranges for individual species. We've got the water holding frog. Now this frog can survive from 3 degrees to 39 degrees Celsius. A platypus can survive from minus 8 to plus 34 degrees Celsius. Sydney blue thumb um, eucalyptus can go from minus 1 degree to plus 34 degrees Celsius. And silky oak found in alpine regions um, can live within 0 to 38 degrees Celsius. So most of these are within a 40 degree temperature range as you can see. The most heat tolerant animal known as the Pompeii worm was discovered in the 1980s. They live in tubes in the seafloor near, near the hydrothermal vents and they show extraordinary tolerance to an extremely wide range of temperatures. They have been recorded living in water with the tail end at 80 degrees Celsius and the head end at 22 degrees Celsius. Research has shown that Pompeii worms can withstand such extreme temperatures because of a fleece-like covering of bacteria on their backs. Now they have a symbiotic relationship. Symbiotic means that they have a mutual relationship where they both benefit from each other. So they have a symbiotic relationship with the bacteria. The worms secrete mucus from tiny glands on their backs to feed the bacteria and the bacteria protect the worm from the excess heat. In summary, most organisms live within a narrow temperature range to survive. The great majority of living organisms are found within the 10 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius range. And organisms have a high tolerance for extreme temperatures are called extremophiles. This concludes looking at organisms within a temperature range environment. Thank you.